Hi, I'm Ann Frazier. Welcome to another edition of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. And I'm sitting here with my very good friend, Nicole McMonagle. And welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nicole is a community ambassador for Silverado. And she also does other things in our community. But let's start with your involvement with Night of Hope. Tell everybody a little bit about what you do for Night of Hope and your involvement. Yes, so I've had the honor and the privilege to be a part of the gala committee team and with the podcast as well, and really helping the executive team get the word out about Night of Hope, uh, which has been great. Last year was my first year at the gala, so I spent all year learning about the gala and learning what that all entails and the messaging and the mission and just very excited. And then so being part of the gala and creating that experience with everybody, getting the word out about brain health. Um, has just been absolutely wonderful, and I'm and I'm just honored to be a part of the team that's Aww. just getting the word out even more, and so more people in the Kansas City metro area and those nationwide too can learn about what we can do to empower ourselves and and ultimately have better brain health. Absolutely, absolutely. And Nicole is being a little bit. Uh, she's not. I'm going to brag on her for a minute, but she writes almost all of the questions that we have for the podcast. She works very hard at that. So. Thank you for doing that, and thanks for all the things you do, because it's a lot of time. It is, and and sometimes being behind behind the scenes, you know, you get to, you want to see some of these experts that we have on here. We want to make sure we're not asking them the same things, and and there's so many... There's so many uh, layers to some of the experts that you have on here, and I just want to make sure we really get to some of their differentiators and what makes them unique because people people don't know what they don't know. And we want to make sure that, that we provide that opportunity to be able to share share the information, Absolutely. the information that your listeners want to hear. Absolutely. That is true. So let's jump forward. So We've talked about the different parts of cognition and the brain health. And so one of those parts is social interactions. And you do something in our community that is amazing for that. Let's talk about that. Yeah, so I'm part of, well, Silverado Memory Care Community is my employer. I'm the community ambassador there. And we have an opportunity to work out in the community. And so what that means is uh, we partner with KU Alzheimer's Disease Research Center and collaborate and offer a memory cafe. Uh, I also do one as well at Archwell Health with the association. And really what we're doing is it's a social engagement program. So it's for those that have mild cognitive impairment or any concerns about their health. They don't have to have mild cognitive impairment. Anyone concerned about their brain health, which should be all of us. And, and then also those maybe in the early stages of the disease. And it's for them and their care partner. So that care partner can be a spouse. It could be a friend. It could be their actual caregiver that's providing companion care throughout the day to help them get along. And really, they come to a center, and we provide this free service. It's a, it's a wonderful service. It's a social engagement program. I facilitate it. I love facilitating it. And what we do for an, either an hour, an hour and a half, is uh, participate in the social aspects of it, discussion, cognitive exercise, and really working our brains. So think of it like a gym workout for your brain. And so we do it once a month, and there are multiple memory cafes around the community, but we all work together so that way we have opportunities for those that are living with brain change to be able to go out and socialize and and work their brains out, too. Because being someone that has dealt with cognitive decline, when you sometimes don't respond appropriately in a conversation or you're having trouble following a conversation, you tend to want to pull back and isolate. So being out and being social, especially in a safe place, is so important. How many people, what's the average age of the people that join the Memory Cafe? So it's it, each group is different. So, um, you know, one of our groups that happens to be at a health center, it's at a health center for older adults. Uh, the age is a little bit, it's, I would say, probably 70s, 80s. And um, just, it's a lot of, it, that one tends to be a lot of women. A lot of women that are, they want to get out. It's their social network as well. And they, but they also want to work on their brains. And then our one at KU, we're finding people coming to us younger and younger. So I've got people in their 60s coming. And that's, that you hit the nail on the head when you said a safe space. So I always introduce myself when we start and say, this is a safe space. Uh, we're, we're not necessarily talking about um, memory impairment or, or any type of deficit or challenges, 
but we, we have that commonality or we're all concerned about our memories or our ability to have um, good executive functioning and judgment. So this is a way that we're going to access different parts of our brain and we're going to do it in a safe space. And, and so really, I think once you set that stage from the beginning, it, it, you know, it's okay, we're going to make mistakes. And people do. And, and they may repeat themselves. And we treat it like it's the first time that we heard it and just keep going along. And that's okay. And I tell them, I make mistakes too. You know, I'm having, I might have word finding difficulty. And, and we just kind of all make it feel like a safe space for all of us. Mm-hmm. Make it feel okay. Yeah. Because, like I said, that that's such a difficult time. And, and, and part of that, I love the part that you said, you guys, not only is a social interaction, but you also do some brain games. Because when we're talking about the six areas, we used to say five, but we've added a sixth. And the sixth one we added was, was hydration. But of the original five and now the six, um, that, that working on your brain health. So that is that, that it's multifaceted because it's, it's social interaction, but it's also working your brain in different ways. And that could be Sudoku, that could be crossword puzzles, word finds, those types of things, but it can also be other things. Explain to some people what are some of the brain games that you play. Yeah, I love uh, I love brain games, word games, and actually, as Silverado Memory Care Community, one of our nexus pillars of brain health is cognitive exercise, and so it lines up perfectly with what you guys do here, what we do here at Night of Hope, and you know, cognition, cognitive exercises that can sound like a, a daunting a daunting term, but really, it's about stretching your brain's limits. You know, we have the ability to create new neural pathways. And we do that and we can access long-term memories and work on a little bit of short-term. But I like using the creative arts as a way to work on cognitive exercises. So whether it's discussion, whether it's using color, um, expressive. So for example, we have a memory cafe next week and, you know, our our overall theme is talking about March and March typically we're talking about St. Patrick's Day. So putting that into taking a next step further, not just talking about St. Patrick's Day, but making that as our central theme, but we might talk about some poetry, some poetry. We might even write poetry. So we might be writing some limericks on talking about color and green and, and really going into depth with discussion. So it's not just uh, it's not just word games, but really expanding the horizons. And I usually tell them what part of the brain that we're working on at that time, because sometimes people would say, "Well, I feel like I didn't get a brain workout." Well, you are. I mean, this is what we're doing. We're accessing long term memories. We're accessing, you know, um, what it's like to be expressive, and that's all. That's all. You're know, looking at the brain. It's all highlighting and, and lighting up different parts of your brain and firing. Yes, that is so important. So. When you guys are doing these types of things, can you see confidence building in people? Yes, I can. And, and I think initially when people come out to a memory cafe, they want to kind of sit back and, and, and observe, which oftentimes I said, we don't have to have you participate if you don't like to, because not everybody wants to be called on. Because if, if they do have an incorrect answer to a question or, um, or just shy about it, it, it may want them to, to be you know, a little more held back and or maybe not want to come uh, because we, we nobody wants to fail. Everybody wants to be set, set up for success. So I think that's the main key is setting them up for success. And if I notice that someone's having a little bit of of challenges with some certain type of exercise, then uh, I, I set them up for success even further without them even noticing. So when you see that and they are able to participate, you know, lots of lots of positivity and lots of jokes and laughter. And um, and even if the other participants catch on that, you know, someone just said that and then they said it again. Um, we make it like it was the first time, as I mentioned before. And by doing that, they feel good and confident instead of if somebody were to say, well, gosh, you just said that. And so I think that that really helps people. And then they see the, the, the friendliness and the, the openness about it. And that and it's okay if we make mistakes. And I think that, that that really helps a lot too. It does. It does help a lot. And it, what, what I like about all the things that you're saying, if you go to something and you've really put your brain into what you're doing and you're paying attention, you're answering the questions and you're doing all the things, I think it kind of wears your brain out a little bit. Yeah. Have you ever had like, a big meeting that you've had to prepare for and you're in that meeting and you have to be so on and you have to be engaged and then you get done and you're just like, 
oh my goodness, I am so tired because it can be taxing to exercise your brain in ways that it's not normal. Like you normally probably don't present every day or put on a big presentation every day. So I think that that is so good for people who do have some cognitive de- deficits to have that interaction, to have that way that they can ex- ex- exercise that brain a little bit and hopefully go home and feel a little exhausted from that knowing that I did something today and that alone feels good. Yes, it does. And I, and I talk about, you know, what can we do? What one thing can we do, whether it's once a day that can we fit into our routine? So maybe not every day we're doing a uh, memory cafe. Of course, there's not 30 or 31 memory cafes to go around to have something fit into your day, but there are things we can still do. And as you know, with that cognitive exercise, you can add in a little physical exercise with that too. And so there's different ways that we can do to fit this into our schedule and different brain activities and different brain exercise books. So people often ask me about that. What other things can I do at home when I'm not coming to Memory Cafe? And so I give them some good resources on on memory exercises and different workbooks that have been um, you know evidence based. Of course, we want evidence based stuff, and and we want them to be able to like it and enjoy it. I think that's the key. But here's the thing: is we we can empower ourselves to try things that are hard. We don't want things that are too hard or else we're never going to do them. Like I'm not going to sit there and open up a calculus book and do calculus stuff because I, quite frankly, just don't like that. But I'm going to find something that I enjoy and then make it hard and hard enough so where I'm actually stretching my brain. That is really good. And and we I've talked about this when I speak sometimes, but one of the things I do um, in my busy life is uh, uh, I downloaded it to my phone and to my computer and it's called Brain HQ. And um, I think it's like eight or nine dollars a month, but it exercises my brain in a way that nothing else does. And it's fun, but it's very intuitive and it figures out where I'm at that day. So if I maybe didn't sleep well or I'm under some stress and my brain's a little bit more slow than normal, then it'll catch where I'm at and then try to press me a little bit, but not not too much that I get frustrated and want to quit. So um, that's one. But yeah. There's so many great resources, and we'll try to put some of those on our website. We have some already, but um, we'll have to get some more of those resources from you to put on the website. Yes, and it's interesting you say Brain HQ because in in Silverado, uh, Lauren Shook's book, uh, New Possibilities in Memory Care, he actually talks about Brain HQ. And so, you know, these are these are things that are evidence based, and and we know it works. So we just got to get the word out there. Um, and it's really, you know, it's not one thing. And I think that that we can agree that that's where, you know, the mission of Night of Hope and then even with Silverado's own mission is that it's not um, it's not just one thing. It's a whole thing together. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not one thing that's going to help us here. Right. It's putting these things together. So finding out what resources can benefit and, and finding what, what works well for you. Mm-hmm. That's the key is what works well for you. And like you said, Our body is fluid, so you can't just isolate one thing and say, well, if I only exercise, but I don't change anything else in my lifestyle, that may not be enough. It's, it's, you can start slowly. You don't have to be perfect at everything, but adding something, making sure you're staying social, doing some of these brain activities along with eating well and exercise and good sleep and all the things. So, so I think just, again, the body is fluid and you have to really think about your overall health actually will pay dividends for your brain health. So. I agree. And and one message I really want to get out there is the socialization aspect. You know, I think during the pandemic, one thing that was very front and center that we, we discovered was the social isolation was very real. Mm-hmm. And so now that things have settled out of the pandemic, uh, people are coming out again. We're getting back into groups um, and, and it's and it's awkward, you know. We're we're not all behind screens anymore, and and zooming with each other. But it's still, if that's the way that you can get together with some and socially connect with people, that that's what we want to do. Um, these the socialization and social isolation are real things. So mm-hmm. what you know, finding your people and whatever. When I say finding your people, finding people that are have similar interests, similar goals. 
um, similar abilities and be able to have that group of yours. It's your support group and necessarily you're that's building right. your village. And so I just think that's a really important concept. And I really want to, you know, recommend if you haven't found your groups, whether it's a memory cafe, whether it's a support group or whether it's a social group, your, your bunko group, find that, um, find the groups that are purposeful for you. If we're working on cognitive brain health or we want to volunteer is really go out and think about, you know, it's okay for not good at it. I'm not. I'm not good at everything I do. But you, you just you put that effort forward and just try. Mm-hmm. That's that's such great advice, and I think it's great to be reminded of that. But especially if you're somebody that is dealing with cognitive decline and getting out in front of people is scary. Um, then just what Nicole said is finding that safe group of people that you can be yourself. And if you mess up, it's okay. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest thing is we're all going to mess up. And it's just how how we deal with it and and how we we move forward. But if we're all moving to the commonality of improving our brain health, I mean, Mm -hmm. what's there to lose? Right. Just don't get stuck behind the TV. Yes. (laughs) TV is not your friend. (laughs) It's not your friend. No. Well, this was fun. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do you have anything else you want to add? No, I just appreciate being a part of this. Uh, And now in front of the camera, but usually behind the camera. (laughs) And, 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 And glad we're getting your message out. Thank you so much. Thanks for all that you do for Night of Hope. And uh, even through Silverado in the community, you're a great beacon of hope and light um, because it takes a village to be able to get information out to come alongside people. So thanks for all you do. Well, thank you. Yeah. And thank you guys for joining us today. And we'll look forward to seeing you next time on Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's.